Coming up on today's episode of the Money Pants Superpower Hour. Are you 100% honest when you communicate with your children? We're going to talk about some of the common situations where parents find themselves lying to their children and to themselves. We're going to talk about why the habit of lying can undermine the entire money pants system. We'll talk about the primary issues that lead to dishonest communication and ways to help yourself stay honest and straightforward. We'll talk about avoiding extremes and ways to make what you say carry more weight. All this and more, but first, the joke of the day. The nurse tells the parents of a newly born child, you have a cute baby. The smiling husband says, I bet you say that to all new parents. No, she replies, just to those whose babies are really good looking. The husband again asks, so what do you say to the others? The nurse replies, your baby looks just like you. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Money Pants Superpower Hour. We're your hosts, Hannah and Fontaine Judd, and we're the proud parents of eight sons and seven daughters, ranging in age from newborn to college student. We're both BYU graduates and the creators of Money Pants. Head on over to CaptainMoneyPants.com to learn more about what we do and what we're all about. We believe every person on this planet has been given at least one superpower to help them accomplish their unique mission in life. But the only way to unlock those superpowers is through work ethic. That's when greatness happens. And that's where Money Pants comes in. Money Pants is the complete tool set for cultivating work ethic in all aspects of a person's life. And today's topic is lying. Well, to be a little more specific, today's topic is to never lie. And it's that we're going to talk about this. You kind of sounded like Fozzie Bear when you said that <laughs> lie. Oh, I don't know. Waka waka. Uh, this is the first of, you know, the, there are the three nevers, you know, never lie, uh, never argue and never criticize. And we're going to talk about those other two on a future podcast. But today we're going to talk about never lie. And Hannah, we don't use the word never very often because it's a it's one of those words you should, you got to be careful with that word. Never and always, because when you use those words, you you have a tendency to be extreme and they should be used sparingly. So you, something like, oh, you should never tell your child no. Or, you know, the, these ideas are like, what? That, that actually doesn't quite work. But this concept we're going to talk about today, we're, we're going to be pretty uh, blunt about it. And we're going to say, never lie. And we're, we're going to talk about that, where why we would say that and... Are there, are there situations where you should lie to your children? And we're going we're gonna to talk about that. To jumpstart this topic, though, I just wanted to say that we believe here at Money Pants that parents should never lie to their children. And that, I guess that's the difference, too. And maybe I should clarify, too, the difference between a lie and a surprise. Like, you can withhold information from your children. Like, oh, you're going to have a surprise party. That's okay. But telling your child a lie, and we'll define what a lie here is in a minute, but telling them... A, a lie never ends well. So you're making me feel guilty. Oh, <laughs> that's all. That's well, all. I'm like Caleb taking him out for ice cream. <sighs> what? But we did. I know. Mori <laughs> never ends well. I don't know. You're just making me feel really guilty. Okay, well, let, let you know what? Let, to start off, let's start with some examples. And the first one I, I thought it, of. It, it, yeah, don't. How about instead of never lie, don't lie, don't lie. <laughs> be never. honest. Yeah, never lie. Be honest. Yep. But and straightforward. Yeah. Be straightforward and honest in all your communication. Well, I want to start off by giving a couple of examples. Kind of maybe that'll help to clarify what we mean when we talk about lying. Because I think a lot of times when people hear the word lying, they're like, "Oh, you're you didn't you cheated on your tax records, or you tried to trick somebody, or whatever." Let, let's just break this down a little bit. Number one. There's a mom, she's at the park, and she's sitting on the park bench talking to her friends, and her little daughter Gwendolyn is being a little bit rambunctious, and she keeps fighting with her sister, and the mom says, Gwendolyn, if you don't stop that, we're leaving. And mom, you know, but his mom doesn't really want to do that, because mom spent all her morning getting everybody ready to go to the park. She and, doesn't want to leave. And she has to pick up the kids from sc school right near mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't actually want to leave. And, and her friends are there, too. Exactly. And she's enjoying being at the park. And so. And the house isn't getting messed up. Uh -huh. And, yeah, mom wants to be at the park. So mom has no intention of following through on that. And the interesting thing is mom and Gwendolyn know that. 
They both know mom's lying. But moving on, Gwendolyn keeps fighting with her sister and teasing her. And so finally, mom says, Gwendolyn, come here. Time out. You know, that gives her the, the five minutes. You sit here for five minutes. I don't want to hear a peep out of you for five minutes. 30 seconds goes by. What happens? Off Gwendolyn goes to go play and tease her sister again. So again, what mom said didn't really have any value. And then finally, you know, it's time to go. And so mom says, Gwendolyn, time to go. And Gwendolyn totally ignores her, keeps playing in the sandbox or swinging on the swing or chasing her friends or whatever. And mom actually picks up all her stuff, walks to the car and says, Gwendolyn, I'm leaving. And if you don't come right now, I'm going to leave you here. Really? Is mom really going to do that? Everybody listening knows she's just, it's an, it's an idle threat. It's an idle threat. Everybody yep. knows it. Gwendolyn knows it. Mom knows it. Everybody Every- else at the park knows it. The siblings all know it. Uh-huh. What ha- And so what finally happens is mom goes, walks back, grabs Gwendolyn by the arm and drags her, kicking and screaming, and puts her in her car seat. That's that. So that's one scenario. And I think we've all experienced that to some degree in some, some way or another. And so let's break that down, Hannah. What what was what was the mom trying to do? First of all, she's trying to get her kid to behave, and 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 not fight with her sister and have good manners and good social skills. She was it was the mom was doing like trying to do a good thing. Right, trying to get her daughter to be a good citizen at the park, a yeah. good friend, a have good, good sister, yeah, a exactly. good yeah. She was she was trying to do the right thing. And but her the tool that she used was the, to threaten things that she knew her daughter didn't want. But we, mom knew she wasn't going to follow through with it, and so did the daughter. Yeah, and part of it is probably because mom couldn't think of what to say. Well, or, that's part of the problem. Or do yeah. to actually motivate her. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Some some great solutions, I think. But I'm very defensive of this mom. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, but they, they're called. Wait, I, they're, wait a minute. <laughs> we call we call those. Who is this mom? <laughs> Not you. We call we call this though idle threats, but really it's just lying. Yeah. If if the mom says something, if you if the mom says you're gonna sit here for five minutes, you can't go play for five minutes, and then after thirty seconds the daughter's off playing, is the mom lying? Yeah. Yeah, she if, is. If the mom says, If you don't come right now, I'm going to leave without you, and the mom doesn't leave without her, is the mom lying? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's a hard one for people to swallow. They're like, wait, what? I- well, it, it's it's hard for me because, like, when I first heard of of this uh, concept of not lying, I always consider myself honest. Well, I want to be honest, mm-hmm. but realizing that there are ways that we lie that sometimes we don't realize because maybe because we're in the habit of doing it, and we don't even realize that. Wait a minute, that's not true. That, that is lying, and you don't label it that way. You label it idle threats or, right. you know, something like that. But really, it's lying. And so it's kind of an uncomfortable realization to go, oh, I do that. I I lie to my kids all the time. That's a hard, or, that's a hard you know, thing to accept. To get to, it's a hard thing to go, wait a minute. I If I lie, does that make me a liar? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Oh no. And that's you don't want to make that realization. So let's just kind of put that on the back burner and go was the mom being 100% honest? No. Mm, no. Was she, was she telling untruths? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So And but, did she know it? Yeah. Did Gwendolyn know it? Yeah. Yeah, but but here it comes oh. but there are some problems with this. First of all, it may work doing these idle threats may work the first time or even the second time but as as we've as we know from the story of the little boy who cried wolf after a couple of times people whoever, tune you out they don't believe you anymore yeah and, they tune you out and so this mom at the park saying if you if you don't come right now I'll leave without you uh, that's not the first time that's happened it's probably not the second or the third it's probably like the hundredth time that's happened and Gwendolyn knows better Mom doesn't really mean it. I can ignore her until she grabs me by the arm. And that's exactly what happens. Mom's talking with her friends. She's not going to stop doing that. Yeah. I know. And, I know, Mom. And Mom doesn't want to go home. She doesn't want to leave the park. We just got here. She spent all morning getting ready. I know better. And Mom's... We, so we've played the tape again. This is the, We've seen this, oh, this this little Gwendolyn girl. And she, what, she's five, mm-hmm. seven years old, maybe. She knows. We the Kids are pretty clever, pretty smart. And they figure this stuff out pretty quickly. And so... 
by by not telling the truth, not following through with what you say, actually teaches your kids to ignore you and to not believe you, which that's a really bad thing. Does Gwendolyn believe her mom? When mom says we're going home, does she believe her? No, <laughs> not at all. Um, when she says she's going to go home without her, no. Now, did mom have bad intentions though? Were, were mom's intentions bad? No. So again, we'll get to a definition of lying here in a minute, but... Uh, so mom's intentions weren't bad, but her, her methodology was off. Mm-hmm. And, and unfortunately, it's teaching, Ma, or teaching Gwendolyn some bad lessons. Teaching Gwendolyn to not respect mom, not to believe mom, and also that lying is okay to get what you want. Oh, that's not, called manipulation. Not quite the lesson, that, when, but mom isn't thinking about that when she's doing it. And when you're in the moment, it's really hard because you're like, I just need so-and-so to do such and such. And I'll threaten this or I'll say this. Or Well, I have a, I have a good friend who does this to her adult children all the time. She'll tell me, well, I told them this because I want them to do this. Right. And what she does is she, she lies to them to basically take away their choice Right. And to tell them, oh, I want you to do this for a different reason, but doesn't tell them the real reason. And so th- she doesn't understand why her kids get, her adult kids, like, get annoyed with her. And because they, they picked up on it. Well, they're that, like, what What are you really, what is it you really want, Mom? Well, let's Just ba- say it, let's, please. Let's back up. What, how, do you like it when you're lied to? Does anybody like to be lied to? Well, it's uh, disrespectful. But also, when you... When you lie to me, when you don't give me information or you give me incomplete information, you're actually, like you said, you're taking away some of my opportunities and choices to make a, an informed decision. And that's very frustrating to me because I make a decision based off of the limited or incorrect information you gave me. And it ends badly for me because you lied. So it's not fair to the person being lied to. I hate being lied to. Yeah. Especially, and you know what happens all the time, Hannah. This is this is a systemic. This is a this is a global. This is a national problem where companies and everybody knows this. When companies lie, when companies say their product will do this and it doesn't, oh, this is guaranteed for five years and it lasts for two and a half. Like, we, you're thinking about light bulbs, aren't you? I was actually thinking about washing machines, oh, but yes, okay. light bulbs too. Where <laughs> oh, this is a ten thousand hour light bulb and it lasts you know six months. And I was like, hmm. Yeah, it's I, just really frustrating when you're lied to. When you're yeah. lied to, because you make you make decisions based off of that information. Yeah. So, oh, I'm willing to pay more money, or I'm willing to, you know. And so that, you gotta you gotta understand that as a parent, when you're lying to your children, it's the exact exact same thing, where your children go, oh, I'm not. Maybe, maybe they. And we'll talk about this in a second too, where maybe the kids go, oh, you know, I'm not worthy of the truth. I'm not good enough for the truth, or I I can't. I can't handle the you truth. You can't handle the yeah, truth. Where, so, but, well, well, it's, um, you know, the word manipulation. I've heard people throw it around. Like, for example, I was reading some silly, some blog where somebody was saying, yeah, if you reward your kids or tell them their consequences, you know, punish them or reward mm-hmm. them, that's manipulating them. And that's actually a miss. That's not what manipulation is. Manipulation is a lot of times when a person has a good intention or they, they want a certain outcome, but they're not honest about what it is that they want. Right. If you're being direct and honest, hey, I want you to do this and I'm willing to pay you this, that, that is very direct. That is very honest. It's very direct. Manipulation is when you throw a lie in there. And so uh, manipulating is actually a form of lying. And it's a lot of times, like my neighbor, she wants her kids to make good choices and do the right thing, but she'll go about it the in, wrong this, way. in this indirect way where she's actually lying to her kids. And that is manipulation because it's taking away their choices. And you do that through lying to the other person, Mm -hmm. like, you know, putting them on a guilt trip or saying you want something else when really. Isn't that okay? It's not okay. It is a form of lying and it makes it so people. I've been around people like that. And you have to always, you're like, hey, do you want me to help out? Like, it'll be Thanksgiving. Hey, is there anything I can do to help out? No, I'll do it all myself. Oh, the martyr. Oh, yeah. wait, wait a minute. They're mad that I'm not helping them out. That's what that means. 
And you have to like, you can never relax around the people like that because you don't know what it is that they really want and they really mean because they're yeah. not honest about it. And so it, it really makes the relationship stressful because you're like, okay, what are they, what do they really want? What is it that they, you know, and you have to constantly be guessing, playing this guessing game it's with a them. Ga- it's a game and it's an exhausting oh, game. So, yeah. But that, but that's but part of the problem is we get hooked on this because at first it does work. When the first time you try this manipulation or lying or not telling the truth or idle threats, it does work. And we're like, oh, and you're hooked. But as we talked about it, as time goes on and, and ide- ultimately it totally backfires in the long term, but it does work in the short term. Mm-hmm. But in the long term, it'll, it'll backfire in a major way and it causes all sorts of future problems. Like lot, and we talked about loss of respect for the parents, um, teaching your kids to learn to ignore you. Um, and to tune you out. But not only that, what about when your kids are older and you're cautioning them on the dangers of drinking or drugs or something else? They'll be like, ah, mom and dad are exaggerating and they won't believe you because you've already established this pattern of not telling the whole truth. Yeah. Even though mom's just saying that because she doesn't want me to hang out with these people or, or she, she doesn't, doesn't want me to have fun. They just want to control me uh-huh. or they just, you know, so. So they may do that anyway or think that anyway, but they're more likely to doubt what you're saying if, if you, you have, have a history of lying to them. Exactly. So, so example number two, there's a 14-year-old boy named Bubba, and he's got the youth boot, uh, the youth group, they have the big beach trip planned on Saturday. And he says, Dad, Dad, Mom, i got this big beach trip planned. With, I'm going with the youth group. Can I go? And you say, oh, sure, absolutely, as long as your chores are done. And your homework's done. And you're, and that includes, you know, mowing the lawn and cleaning your bedroom. Well, all during the week, Bubba slacks off, doesn't do his chores. And Saturday rolls around. And there's a honk on the horn at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning. And the friends are here to pick him up, to take him to the beach. And the youth group leaders are all there. Everybody's there to, to pick, pick him up and off they go. And But Bubba's room isn't clean and the lawn isn't mowed. Um. Right away, Bubba's his negotiation tactics kick in. He's like, "Oh, oh, Dad, everybody's here. You know, if you, if you let me go, I'll, I'll mow the lawn when I get back. I promise you won't even have to remind me, please." And then he appeals to the, the social pressure of all oh, my friends are here. Um, and they drove all the way out yep, here. They're going to gonna be mad to, to come and pick me up. The youth leaders think I'm coming, and and you're going to look like a bad parent if you don't let me go. That's the underlying uh-huh. idea, and you cave. You, you, as a parent, you're like, oh, fine, just go. Well, fast forward eight hours, Bubba comes home from the beach trip, sunburned and exhausted, and goes right to his room. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You promised that you would mow the lawn as soon as you got home. What, what, what's the deal? And Bubba goes, oh, Dad, I can't. I'm sunburned and I'm so tired. Oh, I just, I can't. And you're left holding the bag. So, yeah, what this uh, reminds me of is like if as an adult, if you've ever made the mistake of like paying a construction worker all the money up front before they complete the job and then you're left like begging them three years later to please finish, you know, whatever. They have no motive. Yeah. All of a sudden you're back burner and it's it's kind of. They already got theirs. You got to fish for yours. Yeah. So that's. And, and that reminds me of the, the, the old cartoons where, you know, when somebody realizes they've been played the fool and they they, they, they turn into a sucker. You know, they're the cartoon that shows <laughs> the picture. Of, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's the music that they play? Na, 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 or whatever. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. That one. <laughs> so Bubba, in this case, played his parents for the fool. And so, so let's break that down a little bit. What? Who's the liar here? They're both liars. Yeah. That's... You can go if you get this done. No, what, no well, what did you say? As the parent, you said, you can go on your beach trip if... Your room's clean, room's clean and, and your job's mowed. done. Yeah. Yet, here we are, Saturday morning, the lawn isn't mowed, and your room isn't clean yet. Off goes Bubba. Who's the liar? Dad and mm. mom. That Dad and mom are the liars. But then, who agreed to those terms? Bubba yeah. did. So Bubba said, yeah, I will mow the lawn and clean my room before I go on this trip, and yet... Off he goes. So, yeah, like you said, Hannah, mom and dad are liars, and Bubba's a liar. And he lied about doing it when he got back. And he lied about doing it when he got back because, oh, he's too tired now. But now both of you are lying, so he doesn't feel bad about it because, you know, 
it's it's what you guys did too. We all do this together. <laughs> so what a great lesson we've taught Bubba that lying's okay if you if to get what you want. <laughs> Whoops. No, what okay, so this whole thing backfired. Everything about that scenario was bad, yet across the country, every week, we see this over and over again where parents say one thing and the kids agree to it, but then when that thing comes due, the, the kids are like, oh, I can't. Or and they come up with excuses or they lie or or the parents uh, back down or whatever. And it ends badly. And it what does it teach the kids? That, that's just it. What is this teaching the kids? Is It's teaching the kids it's okay to lie. And that's normal. And that's healthy. Or mom and dad won't actually stick to this and I can or te- yeah, or yeah, them negotiate that, that, my way out of it. And, and mom and dad and what mom and dad say doesn't really matter. Yeah. They just like to talk. Example number three. Hannah, you had a sibling, and we'll call him Kevin. (laughs) (laughs) He knows who he is. He wanted to go to the movies (laughs) with his friends, and your mom said no. Uh And I remember you, Hannah, I can't remember how many times you've told me this story, but it's, you you, you laugh because it's it's almost, it's comical because your mom would say no, and Kevin would proceed then for the next three hours to torment your mother. Not only would he ask her again and again and again, but then he would also do things that he knew would annoy my mom. Like he'd purposely tease people, make them cry, or just do things that would just get under her skin where she's like, oh, wow, you're really, an, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're driving me nuts. <laughs> and he was doing it on purpose, though, was the thing, is he was trying to annoy his mom. Into submission. Our mom into submission. But it didn't just annoy my mom, it annoyed me. <laughs> and I remember getting so mad and saying, cut it out, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> cut it out mom said no okay anyway um and one time it was really I just remember this one specific time he wanted to go to the movies my mom kept saying no and he just tormented tormented her and just did everything he could to upset her annoy her Mm -hmm. and finally I'm like I was like cut it out mom told you no and right then my mom said you know what you know what I I've had it fine you can go to the movies. Go. Get out of here. And then after that, he stopped torturing her and went his merry way. And I turned to my mom and like, you were letting him go after he, after what he's done to you for the <laughs> last three hours? And she's like, yeah, I can't handle anymore. And she couldn't. I don't blame her. I was ready to, you know, <laughs> I was going nuts too. But, but basically... He was very pleased. He got what he was, that was his objective, was to get her, break her down. Mm -hmm. And so he logged that one away and knew exactly what to do. And Well, it was a game they would play where where him annoying your mom to death, beating her down, whatever you want to call it, wearing her down, it was the game they would play. I think if my dad was there, he would have intervened. You think? Yeah. But I think the only reason he got away with it was because it was just my poor mom there. And, you know. (laughs) Well, Well, let's, okay, so let's break that down a little bit where... First of all, did mom lie? Uh, That's a weird one. Where, I don't know. Like, because if you're being tortured, does that... Does that count? Does that count? <laughs> you know, in our constitution, we talk about how confessions, you know... Under duress. Court, under duress, that, you know, we're not allowed doing that. So it wasn't quite a fair thing. She was being tortured. Right. But she, like, allowed, sh- but really. she allowed herself. To be tortured. Exactly. But, so there's where the mistake was. Is is. But but then, uh, but it's a unique situation in that is is it okay for her to change her mind? Yeah, I mean, is there anything wrong with changing your mind? So why can't she just say, "Oh, well, I changed my mind. I want him to go now." Yeah. What? So th- this is kind of one of those gray She's areas. She's like, is like, this battle worth fighting? Yeah. No, it's not. Go to the theater, my mm-hmm. son, and get out of my hair. But here's the problem. What she should have said, if she had originally said no, and then he annoys her until she lets him go, that's teaching him a bad lesson that in order to get what you want, you need to annoy people. But I think it would have been better if your mom had, if she, if she had in fact changed her mind, she could have done it like this, where she would have said, you know what? I said no at first, Kevin, but... I, I have a different idea. I need the garage cleaned. If you really want to go, 
you can clean the garage. And then if you clean the garage, then I'll let you go. That way she gets something that she wants and he gets what he wants and everybody's happy. That, that would have been a better way, I think, to handle yeah. it. And also to say, hey, if she tells him no and he starts n- nagging her and asking again and again, mm-hmm. that the, the second time he asked, it should have been, hey, you know what? It, uh, you ask me again, that will be a fee. Yeah. And it will double if you ask me again. Otherwise, yeah. she's she's just she's rewarding him for torturing her. Like if if she allows this to continue on for hours and hours, and then finally gives into what he wants, he she's actually and I, I'm sure she didn't think of this at the time. Yeah. But from an outside perspective, it's very obvious she is rewarding him, giving him what he wants, for torturing her. That's a very bad lesson and a very bad precedent. Yeah. You don't want to teach your kids that. Well, that part, don't reward your kids for torturing you. Part of you. the problem with that I'm is, rewarding my kids for driving me nuts. <laughs> because, like, let's say he let's say he mm-hmm. asked her a hundred times mm-hmm. before he got the yes. Well, now he knows that if he asks a hundred times, he'll get a yes. But let's say next time he asks a hundred times and she keeps saying no, he'll ask a hundred more times right. to try to get... Oh, 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 it reminds me of that movie, The Shawshank Redemption, where Andy Dufresne writes the, I can't remember, the, the Congress or whatever, for funding for the library, the prison library. And he writes a letter a week for years. And finally, they, they break down and they give him 200 bucks and a bunch of old books. And, and he goes, wow, it finally, it only took five years, but wow, it finally worked. Now I'll write two letters a week. <laughs> <Where> <laughs> he knew that, he, okay, he, the, the reward, they rewarded him for his persistence by annoying them. And so finally they ended up, I think by writing two letters a week, they finally allocated like a 500 bucks a year for this library and all this stuff. And anyway, same concept where your mother was actually teaching your brother, Kevin to annoy her until he got what he wanted. Well, it, And it's also the concept behind gambling where, you mm. know, you get no, 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 no jackpot, <laughs> you know, yep, and yep. it's actually, creates a very strong behavior addiction almost but uh yeah, the, the, I, I, the, like, the psychology explains that is the most effective uh behavior modifier is infrequent rewards irregular infrequent rewards and they have they do the whole thing with the chicken we talked about this in a previous podcast where the chicken presses the button and a piece of food comes out chicken presses the button again piece of food comes out chicken presses the button again and no food comes out so the chicken presses the button a couple more times and then a piece of food comes out and like say, oh okay and the chicken pecks the button and nothing happens over and over. The chicken pecks the button like 20 times and then finally a piece of food comes out. And then the chicken pecks the button 50 times before the piece of food comes out. Pretty soon, the, pe- the chicken is just pecking, peck, 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 that button like 150 times before a piece of food comes out. They've trained the chicken to peck the button. Well, your mom is exactly the same way where Kevin, she had trained Kevin to peck at her <laughs> until she finally gave him the treat that he was looking Ow. for. Ow. Yeah, no good. So it would, she, and, okay. And so I need to back up though about the whole lying thing, though, how this applies to lying, where your mom, I don't think she was clear why she said no in the first place. And maybe that was the real issue because if she, if she had clarified it in her own mind, because I think as parents, too often we're, we're, we're just too quick to say no, just blatant, blatant uh, no, I can't be bothered, no. Whereas we, and we'll talk about this in a second, where we need to think about what we say. But if your mom had actually sat back and went, okay. You want to go do this. And kids will do this. And we'll talk about this in a second, too. But they'll, they'll try to nail you down at the moment and get a commitment out of you right then when it's mm-hmm. really inconvenient. Like you're taking groceries in, your hands are full. Mom, can I go do such and such? You're like, yeah, yeah, fine, whatever. And so parents, we get we get wise to that. And so our default response is no, no, no. I just And the blanket no, where a lot of times it'd be just fine. So I think your mom, it would have been better if your mom were to say, well, let me think about it. Mm. And then she goes back to her room or when, it, when she has a moment and says, okay, why is it that I don't want him to go? Maybe maybe you have a family dinner or guests are coming over or she didn't want him to go see that movie or doesn't like the friends he's hanging out with or going with. And that way, when she tells him no, she knows why. And I need to be, be clear here. She doesn't have to tell her son those reasons because he'll try to figure out a way to get around it. Oh, well, those friends aren't really going this time or whatever. And, you know. No, she doesn't have to tell him her reasons, but she needs to know her reasons. Mm -hmm. That's true, because thinking about that time, my mom had just a lot of stuff on her plate, and she was having some really bad health issues that were giving her these 
crazy, crazy migraines at that time, Mm -hmm. she probably wasn't feeling well. Yeah. And she was probably had a ton of stuff she had to get done Mm -hmm. that day. And it just wasn't a convenient time for her. I'm just guessing um, that those were probably her reasons. Whereas if she had taken, if, you know, and it's hard to think through things if you're not feeling well. So, but, but if she all the more reason to say, let me think about it, let me think about it. Why don't I want to do this? And if she had pinpointed, well, gosh, it's because I have to get this done, this done, this done. She could have taken little Kevin who had tons of energy and and determination and had him do some of the things and relieve some of the stress off of her. And so that would have been a better situation. Um, And I know, (laughs) but like I said, it's so easy to analyze it when you're not the person in the situation. But we're going to talk about (laughs) ways to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk about that. So, so, but yeah, these are, these are probably situations, these are real life situations that you'll probably find yourself in not feeling well, having a kid, wanting something. Or and, being busy or and yeah, or um, being stressed out or in the middle of something. It doesn't matter. Kids aren't privy to that. or And sometimes they are. And they know exactly the right time <laughs> to ask. And they milk yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> so you got to watch what you say. And okay. a great a great way to approach that is, let me think about it. And we'll talk about a couple of other ideas here in a minute. And I liked what you said, Hannah, where once mom makes the decision, though, and she knows why she made that decision, it's because... She doesn't want little Kevin going and seeing that movie with those friends. Then she needs to stick to it. And if Kevin keeps pestering her, like you said, she needs to say, Kevin, that's the second time you've asked me after I said no. If you ask me again, it'll be a dollar or it'll be a fee or whatever. And all of a sudden, the problem goes away. Yeah. And he doesn't pester her until she gives in. And or mom mom's becomes not a liar. rich. Or mom becomes rich. <laughs> Either way, it's great. Okay. <laughs> Example number four, Hannah. You're going to talk about this one because this is the one where this is the example we came up with you teaching history class and the kids would keep making noises. And I. Oh, no, this is a current example. (laughs) Okay, so I teach a history class and I found that when I teach history, what I do is I hand out library books to all my kids and I have them copy a picture in their art notebook so they get to pick out a picture and they copy that picture so they're developing their art skills while i'm reading history their history lesson and it works pretty well but every once in a while you'll have kids who you know start trying to tease one of their siblings or they're just having a day where they're interrupting and and i'll have days where i get frustrated about that where i'm like okay yeah, you know, I have. I keep having to stop, find my place again, get real. You know, figure out. Wh- okay, what were we talking about? And mm-hmm. I, I hate getting interrupted. So I'll be like, "Okay, guys, listen. You know, you're getting up to go get your pencil. You're doing this. This is all supposed. You know, you're pestering so and so. Listen, if there's one more interruption." I am going to give out a fee. I'm getting so mad and frustrated Mm -hmm. and um, I should be offering a reward for good behavior now that I think about it. Uh, But what will happen is, you know, they'll test the boundaries and instead of following through with a fee, I realize I don't want to give them a fee. I'm, I, because that I, that's a whole dollar and it's killing my heart. And I, I'm like, I I don't want to be mean. Oh, And so because I don't want to be mean, instead, I just start yelling at them. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't know, calling them names or something horrible. I don't know what I do. (laughs) Um, Anyway, but it's so funny because the reason I'm yelling at them is because I, I don't want them to have to pay the fee. And it's not because I don't like them. It's like, I'm like, no, but it's you're going to lose a dollar. <laughs> but the reason you're doing it is because you want to be nice. I want to be nice. And they're, and they're like not taking advantage of my of me wanting to be nice. Anyway, they're not respecting me. And I'm getting ah, so okay. upset so, that they're not respecting me. And it's hurting my feelings. Mm-hmm. And it's just so hard being a Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. So, let's, Hannah, I love that. So, uh, let's break it down. Yeah. Where... And, and part of it is I, I have a problem with, I used to be a very, um, like a pleaser and I, you know, I want people to like me and I want to be nice to people and, you can't, and you can't so be that way and be a parent. It doesn't work that yeah, way. Yeah. Anyway. So, but that's kind if of you're always the worried struggle. that your kids like you, I'm just going to say it right now. Oh. That is not your job as a parent. That's the job of 
their friends. Honey, now you're making me feel worse. No. <laughs> well, no, that's just it. I know. It, for, for anybody but who's I... listening who's trying really hard to be a friend with their, their, their kids, you're making a mistake. Your kids have plenty of friends. And you're going to be disappointed. They only have <laughs> two parents. They only have a mom no. and a dad. That's it. Uh-huh. And it's not your job to be nice. It's your, yes, it's good to be kind. That's not the same thing as being nice and being a pushover, though. And that, I don't nice go, and kind versus kind. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a difference. You can be kind, and actually it would have been kinder if you had given them the fee instead of yelling at them or getting angry at them. That's just it. Threatening is them realizing, death and yeah, 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 yeah. That's like, uh, that's ruining the relationship. Yep. They would realize, oh, yeah, I'm interrupting class. That's the consequence. Well, not only that, they would respect but, you more. If you actually stuck to your guns. Yeah. And that's just the thing is you, you can stick by your guns without being unkind about Mm -hmm. it. Well, no, actually we, we think that's, I've seen you do it. Using money payments. It actually, oh man, I'm sorry. That really bums me out that you interrupted again. Go get me a dollar. And they hand me the dollar. I'm like, man, you could have bought so many things with this. Yeah. What a bummer. I'm so sorry. I hate taking your money. Yeah. I hate taking your money, but you know what? I, I do want you to be respectful. Please go sit down. Yes. And it it's amazing because it does not, believe it or not, it does not damage the relationship. But there's that concept that if I lie to my kids and threaten these things and not follow through, that somehow I'm, I'm being you're gonna nice. Be li- you're going to be liked by your kids more. Nope. And it's a lie. It is not true. It's you will lie. not be liked nope. more. You will just be disrespected. Well, in reality, though, Hannah, you're teaching them to ignore you, to disrespect you, and that your word means nothing. And I become a nag. Yep. And that, well, and that, and that, well, no, that leads into that leads into escalation where yeah. if the behavior doesn't improve, you have to up the ante. And so, you know, you threaten more and more and you yell more. And pretty soon, you know, it's just this giant chaos and the, and the, the eruption of oh, I can't stand anymore. You're tossing tables over and children are scattering all over the place. Which, which would be better? Collecting that one dollar fee or having your kids terrified <laughs> that you're going to go ape like. I, I think it's obvious, but yeah. it's it just, it's one of those things where don't lie. Yeah. Don't threaten something that you're not willing to follow through on. Yeah. And the thing that does ruin the relationship is yelling and losing your temper. And Well, and at the same time, you know, your kids, uh-huh. they, may, they may actually get a kick out of that too. Watching your, your blood pressure rise and see how far they can push you before you, know what? before actually, you explode. Actually, yes, there are kids that I, we, yeah, because they do it to their siblings. Some yeah. of these kids, they want to see them. Oh, oh they, that's hilarious! Did you see? <laughs> hey guys, if, if I do that, if I do such and such, my if for long enough, my dad will explode. You want to come over and see the show? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, and but at the same time, you know that's that actually is the job of children to test the boundaries. Uh-huh. That, that's their job. Where if they didn't do that, there's actually probably something wrong with your children. Oh man, you know that reminds me of a story. My cousin. One time I was, I, I didn't know this cousin really well. She lived in California. I lived in Florida. And, but I knew that her mom had been married previously to her, someone else before her dad. I thought it was common knowledge. And so I said, well, yeah. And in a casual conversation, I'm like, well, your mom was married to some other guy before. And my, my cousin was, her eyes bulged out. We were in high school and she's like, what, what? My mom wasn't married before. I'm like, yeah, I, I thought she was. Like, was she? And so then we went and checked with somebody who knew. And and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're, and my, my cousin was like, what was his name? And he's like, oh, Sonny. And she's like, Sonny? Oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> and so her mom was a real uptight person. Anyway, so she had just had a baby. And they were blessing it at church. And and we, we came into the car after church. And there's my cousin in the back of the car. And she has a baby there. And she's like, Sunny, 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 Sunny. I'm going to call you Sunny. Sunny, 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 Sunny. And her mom goes, stop it. You know, and, 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 and she goes, and, and, and my cousin goes, why, mommy? Why don't you want me to call the baby Sunny? Oh, Sunny, Sunny, Sunny. And, and her mom goes, because it's a yucky name. <laughs> And my cousin was just having the time of her life teasing her mom. Yeah. Teasing her mom. And of she course. was getting a kick out of seeing her mom get all upset That's what I'm saying. and like mad. Some, some and kids I was like, get a kick out I of it. was mortified. It's a, it's a show. 
How, yeah. What a fun show. Anyway, but she was yeah. showing off for her cousin. Watch, <laughs> see if I can get my mom to explode. So, <laughs> it worked. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so num- example number five. Oh, I like this one, where my four-year-old, four-year, four year, four years old, Lumpy, <clears throat> comes to you, Hannah, you, and you had just had the baby, and you had a, you'd had to have a cesarean section, so you were laid up in bed. Yeah. And in lo- fact, our last two podcasts were from bed. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. And, oh. and I can't remember the details, but it was something like he went to ask you if he could have cookies or something. Uh-huh. It was something simple like that. But yeah. You- and, and the answer was no. I think we were about to have dinner and the answer was no. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, Lumpy, not right now. We're about to have dinner. Mm-hmm. And he just walked out of the room and he was about to turn the corner down the hall. And he turned around with a smug look. This is a four-year-old. Smug look, and, and he said, well, I'll just go ask Dad. And off he went down the hall. And I thought, what a little booger. <laughs> he thinks he's outsmarted me, you know. And so I texted texted you, Fontaine, and said, hey, just FYI, Lumpy's on his way. <laughs> he has big was, plans. I thought to, that was a weird to, text. To, until I realized what had happened. Yeah, to but, game the system here. So why do we bring that up in the lie? Never lie. Did you lie? No, I no. did not lie. But here's the thing: is that if if mom says no, and then if 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 you had said no, and then Lumpy came to me, and I said yes. So you said no cookies. He comes to me, and I say, oh yeah, sure, go have have, have a cookie. Does that make you a liar? Yes. Yeah. You had said he can't have a cookie, and there he is eating a cookie. Ah, mom's a liar. He made you a liar by going behind yeah, your he, back. Yeah, he, he no longer respects uh-huh. my word. Yeah, exactly. And so dad actually inadvertently would have made Lumpy, or would have inadvertently would have made mom a liar. And so it's this is a this is a common technique kids use to divide parents because. If one parent says no, the kid goes to the other parent, which it, and, and they get a yes from the other parent, which actually turns the first parent into a liar. Well, in this situation, it would have been a, a situation where you didn't know that I had said no. Right. And you didn't matter. know I, it was time for have, dinner. But I would have turned you into a yes, liar. Yes, but sometimes in some families... The parents are like, well, I don't see a problem with him not and with him having a cookie, mm-hmm. and they know that the other parent said no, and they say yeah. they say yes, and there's an actual so if that's division if there. If that's the case in the family, you'd got to nip that one in the bud because the kids will use the parents and pit each them against each other and cause all sorts of problems. You know, that, you know that some kids have actually caused parents to get divorced because of that sort of thing, where kids can cause a divorce. Because they pit the parents against each other to get to get what to they, get what they want. want, and the the mom gets mad at the dad. Why did you say that? Why did you do that? Da, 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 da. I can't believe you did. And the dad gets mad at the mom. I said no, and you said yes, and blah 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 blah. And it causes all sorts of fights and all sorts of problems. And kids will actually use that, maybe because they enjoy the show, or maybe because they're just selfish and they want to get what they want, or a myriad of other reasons. But kids will actually <clears throat> cause divorce and and split up couples to get what they want. Yeah. Using now, this technique. And, and uh, some couples that are divorced, a lot of times they're divorced for a reason because they don't get along. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that ends up being a huge issue where the kids, they, they're like, oh, I'll just go to mom. I'll just go yeah. to dad. Yeah. And it's really sad that well, that happens. One parent's happens. a good cop, bad cop. Yep, yeah, yeah. And so I always, re- I, it's funny, I respect the parents where when they get divorced, they still put their kids first and realize, no, we've got to actually, even though we're divorced, we still need to be united when it comes to raising our kids and doing what's best for them. Mm-hmm. We can't, you know, and what's funny is the parents that have been united enough to have that sort of sense to put their kids first a lot of times they end up getting remarried because <laughs> they, they're like you know it, because they're they're putting others first they're at least right. unselfish enough to realize no i gotta um be more concerned about well we talk doing about what's being, right we, we talk about it being a unified front yeah whatever whatever the case you know the, the enemy and i'm not saying kids are the enemy but in this scenario they're acting like the enemy yeah and if there are big gaps in your armor or big gaps in the in your maginot line they're going to find them and they're going to exploit them. So parents have to be unified. Yeah. So the rule that um, we tell our kids is, hey, listen. Well, no, let me, let me oh. break it down. Here it is. If mom says no, the answer is no. 
If dad says no, the answer is no. If mom says yes, but dad says no, the answer is still no. And if dad says yes, but mom says no, the answer is still no. The only time it's yes is when dad and mom both say yes. So Yeah, so if, our kids <laughs> know that if they pull that stunt of going yeah, what and, happens? Um, like if, if we even find out that you, yeah, if dad said no and you came and asked me, you're in trouble. <laughs> Big trouble. That's a fee. That's you don't, an automatic You fee. don't try to and, divide mom and dad. And a loss of privileges. Yeah, yeah. You do not try dividing mom and dad. We have enough problems. We don't need you doing that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so. and, and yeah, because, you know, if I, if I tell the kids no tattoos and, you know, the, my divorced wife goes and gets the kid tattoos, I'm like, what? That tells them that my word means nothing. Like yeah. if, if I tell, if you told Lumpy no cookies and then dad, me, I will and say, oh, you can have cookies. That tells Lumpy, oh. I can disregard what mom says. Oh, that's frustrating. What mom says, because mom's a liar. <clears throat> now, it, it, it's kind of a weird scenario, but it's very common. Yeah, and it, it's a problem. You, you And maybe you want to be the popular the popular the parent, cool dad, the, the good cool, cop. Yeah. And I want my kids to like me, but if they lose respect for their other parent. In the process. In the process. Yeah. It, it's not going to be a good thing for them. Um, it's, it's not going to be good for your relationship the family, with the spouse. The family has to be unified, especially husband and wives. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And even ex-husbands and ex-wives, you still need to have the kids respect well, like the rules of... There, there's some research to suggest that inconsistent consequences for behaviors uh, go a long way towards uh, psychological problems later on in life. Where kids need that consistency, and it starts with mom and dad. Yeah, I don't want to get into all that too yeah, much, but, but the idea was, that you, mom and dad have you have to nip this one in the bud, and you, the best place to do that, and we're going to talk about this in a second, is to set that up in family council and let the kids know here's the rule: mom says no, it's no; dad says no, it's no; mom says yes, but dad says no, still no; dad says yes, and mom says no, it's still no. It's only when you have the unified mom and dad both saying yes that the answer is finally yes. And if you break that rule, you're in the pit of despair. You know, (laughs) you're in trouble. Yeah. All right. Example number six, lying to yourself. Huh. Uh, Here we go. Where, and this, I think we do more often than not where, oh, I'm going to do this for, and I, Hannah, you got the great example, but I'm thinking, I'm going to do do this uh, because I would over, like, I, I would always push myself a little bit further, a little bit further. And so I would, um, I used to like over exercise Mm -hmm. and I'd be like, okay, I hate jogging, but I need to jog. I'm just going to, I don't want to jog. I'm just going to go one mile. Mm. And then after I finished the one mile, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go one more Mm. and I'm just going to go here. And then, okay, well, I've already come this far. I'm going to go a little bit further. And I'd be like, oh, well, look, I got myself to go, yeah. you know, three yeah. miles and kind of tricked myself. Tricked yourself. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I got myself out, dressed and out there because mm-hmm. I was only going to run a mile. And then I actually went three. Hey, look, it's a great thing. But what would happen is it became harder and harder for me to convince myself to go outside and I'm just going to go one Cause mile. Because you, you didn't trust yourself. Because I knew it was really going to be three or four, you know. And because you're lying, I was to lying to myself and pretending like I didn't know I was lying to myself, but I would consistently lie to myself. So I kind of, I learned this when you and I got Fontaine, when you and I got married, we would be exhausted at the end of the day because I had all little toddlers and toddlers, mm. as everyone knows, is the they're the most destructive force on the planet <laughs> when it comes to like the house and and trying to keep up with them. So I had three toddlers and it was and no older kids, just me against three toddlers trying to keep the house intact. And by the end of the day, I was exhausted. And, you know, after dinner, after getting them all uh, to bed, Okay, the kitchen and the house yeah. downstairs, it's a mess, even though I'd been cleaning and doing tornado. stuff all sure. day. And so, and, and you would just be home from work and you had been at work all day. And we'd look at each other and you'd be like, okay, let's just do a 20 minute cleanup. 
So you'd set a timer for 20 minutes and both of us were exhausted, but I, we'd get yeah, up. I knew I had enough energy for 20 minutes. We can do 20 minutes. We can and do 20 minutes. we would clean for 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, it would look kind of promising in there, you know? And But there were a couple more things still out of place. And, and then the timer went. And I'm like, well, well, let's just finish this up. And you would say, no. I said 20 minutes. But, 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 but there's just this and this and this. And you're like, No. Because tomorrow I'm going to do a 20 minute timer, and if I if I if I end up spending 30, 40 minutes or an hour, I'm not going to believe myself tomorrow when I set the 20 minute timer. Well, that's the problem. Is if you lie to yourself, you won't trust yourself, and all of a sudden, and it may not happen immediately, but eventually it will catch up with you, and you won't you won't believe yourself, and you won't be motivated to do the things that you plan on doing. Yeah, you won't be motivated to just do that 20 minutes yep. because you'll know, like, no, I'm not. Yep. You'll know that you're lying to yourself, and you've done it a million times, and and your body will just kind of revolt and say, nope, not doing it. Which I guess that really leads into the, the big question is, and I think we've kind of hit this, but why should we always tell the truth? And one of the main reasons is, respect and and trust where if you always tell the truth others will trust you but you will trust yourself and there is great power great power in being able knowing that you are trustworthy and that when i say something when i tell myself something i will do it and i will stick to it but that others will have that same idea but also there's this great power of when you always tell the truth to your children it teaches them and it tells them you respect, trust, and love them. You you trust them enough to tell them the truth. You love them enough to give them the truth. And you respect them enough to tell them the truth, to make their own decisions. We're not into manipulation here. Not at all. And, you know, the, the, the whole concept, you know, the, there may be doubt as to whether or not the sun's coming up tomorrow. But if mom and dad said something, I know that's the truth. And so all of a sudden, you know, when you say things to your kids, and we talked about this a minute ago, where, you know, when you're warning them about drugs or alcohol or something, they're going to be like, oh, mom and dad always tell the truth. Maybe I should listen. Or how about this? You know, when you when you turn to your daughter and you say, I love you, does that have a little more power? Mm -hmm. If they know mom and dad never lie and you tell them, I love you, hmm, you think that has... Uh, more, uh, an influence on them they're like oh wow that must be true because mom and dad never lie wow so all of a sudden we've got some really good things going on here if we always tell the truth so and of course yeah. that, that kind well, of it's it's truth is power like also because your word has power right because people can trust what you're saying it, if you're offering a reward if you're you know a consequence or Warning saying how you feel danger, uh -huh. or yeah, you, you your word means something. It has power because you're trusted. Well, there was a phrase I heard many years ago, and I can't remember who said it, but it was, it, this was the phrase, it is better to be trusted than loved. And I've, I, put, I took that to heart because it's true. I'll take somebody who I can trust any day over somebody that, that, I, I, like. that I like or I love. That's likable. Yeah, because I know they're going to have my back but I also know they're going to be true to whatever task or thing that they're they're committed to. So, yeah. um, so to, to kind of round this out, though, let's talk about. <laughs> you're probably wondering out there in audience mm -hmm. land, what this has to do with money pants. Well, the fact is, it has everything to do with money pants. The entire money pants system is based on trust and the kids believing that the money they're going to be able to spend the money that they the way they're planning you're going to have gonna, payday you're, gonna, you're <laughs> going to pay them the consequences are real the rewards are real all this all this is legit the whole concept of money pants is based off of trust and if that trust isn't there everything falls apart yeah if you cop out bail out mm -hmm. you know flip flop there it's just not going to if you if you have idle threats yeah for example if you say you know you tell your son or daughter if you can't, if you want to go to soccer, you got to finish your job first and then you cave and you let them go to soccer anyway. Next time they want to go to soccer, they're like, oh, mom and dad will cave. I won't have to do my job. The whole system falls apart, but you're like, oh, well, so, so what? I'll tell you why. This is the so what. Your kids are supposed to be developing their superpowers and it's going to be hard and it's difficult and it's tedious 
it's incredibly rewarding and it's amazing. But if they can cop out, if they can cut corners, if they can uh, escape some of their duties, they'll never amount to anything. They'll never develop those superpowers. They'll never develop the work ethic. I thought you were going to say jack squat. (laughs) (laughs) They'll never become who they need to become if you let them off the hook. And that's that's one of those main reasons where mom and dads, and you guys, are the, moms and dads are the ones that, that set the standard for the home. Set, they're the ones that, that set the tone. And if mom and dad are lying, yeah, kids are probably going to follow suit. But if mom and dad are, are 100% honest, yeah, maybe the kids will turn out that way, but maybe not. But at the very least, you're going to increase the odds. The odds will be much closer in your favor if you're setting a good example for the kids. Well, we talked about the layered rewards. Mm -hmm. The uh, and yeah, so like, hey, if you you know earn this much earn this much money from uh, from your total earnings by Friday, uh, we'll have a family movie night. Right. And Friday comes, they don't have enough money, and you're like, ah, you can watch it anyway. What's gonna happen next week? What's gonna happen next week? They're not gonna be motivated to work. But here's the flip side. You say, hey, if you get, and let's go to mastery here, if you earn 100 mastery points, which is, Hannah, that's huge, mm-hmm. you can have the car in the garage. And the kid goes, really? Oh, yeah, that old beater car that you think is so cool? Absolutely. That'll be yours if you earn 100 mastery points with your piano lessons. And the kid gets all excited and works really hard. And then over the years that he's working towards that, he learns that you're not telling the truth and that you lie. He's going to second guess and go, wait a minute, am I really going to get that car? Are mom and dad really going to give me that? I don't know. I, I don't think so. And all of a sudden, the motivation goes away. The piano practicing goes away. That superpower disappears. All because mom and dad didn't have that trust with their son or daughter. Mm-hmm. So there, there's great power. Whereas <laughs> if they know mom and dad always tell the truth, then it's up to them. Then they'll be like, well, you know what? I, I really do want that car. Piano, maybe not my favorite thing, but I can I can practice and do well at piano for the next 100 weeks, get 100 of those, you know, mastery points, and I, I can do this. So it's, it's very powerful. So uh, those are the kind of the major life lessons where, yeah, oh, oh, but you had a comment too, Hannah, about um, always telling the truth to set up rewards and anticipate problems where you would go, you, you were telling me how you would go to the store and mm-hmm. you knew... Going to the store, it's a, it, everybody's hungry. It's that time of the day. Everybody's hungry yeah, and tired. Yeah, it's, it's 4.30. Kids are starting to fall apart. I know that the behavior is not going to be great in the store. Right. And so before I even go into the store, I anticipate that and I set up the rewards ahead of time before I say, hey, here's how it's going to be. This is the situation. We're going to the store. It's that time of day. It's, you know, and this is what I want from you guys. And here's the rewards, but here are the consequences. Let's go. And what's great about that is I'm calm and I'm able to set things up mm-hmm. when I'm calm. And so I'm not saying things, making idle threats uh, while I'm in the store feeling trapped, you know, by by the bad behavior and getting frustrated. Well, what are you going to do? What, if the kids, I have, no, to no, if the kids have bad done. behavior while you're in the store, what recourse do you have? Yeah. Nothing. And at, at, when and you're, you're at, upset, it's so hard to think calmly of what a nice, what, what a, um, a reasonable Well, no, that's the wrong time to even think about it anyway, because that, that's like talking to the drunk after he's drunk. Hey, yeah. you got this drinking problem. That, that's the wrong time to talk to them. The right time to talk to them and prepare for that is when they're not before drinking. Before I step in before. the store. Because <laughs> once anyway. you're in the store, the kids have you by the tail. Yeah, they can you're, do whatever they yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, you're in this compromised, uh, and they know and it, they know and it. you know it, yep. and it's very frustrating. So you would sit all the kids down and say, okay, guys. And what you, you said, like, you'd set up a reward, right? Yeah, like, I'd be like, okay, um, it, I, I, I sometimes would use jelly beans or or something like that. Or a or, treat at the store. Or, hey, if you earn this many quick points while you're in the store, I'll let you pick out a treat. Or, mm. or you know, it, it's something like that. And how did that work, Hannah? Oh, it works beautifully. People are like, wow, you have such well-behaved children. Other kids come in here and they're terrible. And I'm thinking, Bleh. that was me last week. Because <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to set up the we reward. We forgot to set up the reward. But um, anyway, but it's so funny because they'll like talk about what they think about other people's kids. And I'm thinking, 
okay, you must have seen me on the other day. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, the kids that were in here last week were my kids too. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. But the, the idea is that and it, whether you're using money pants or not, any system that you want to set up in the family, it, it won't work if there's no trust. <laughs> Actually, that has happened to me. <laughs> what? Oh, I was in this one grocery store where they had abnormally small carts that were like flipped over really easily. And one time Trixie was on the side of the cart and I'm like, hey, don't do that. You're going to flip over the cart. And the lady at the store said, you know, the other week we had a family in here and they flipped over the cart and, uh, you know, it was horrible. And uh, yeah, so you're so smart to tell your kids that. And I'm like, yeah, that was me the other week. (laughs) Anyway, so yeah, it happens. <laughs> so any any system won't work if there's no trust and no stick to itiveness. Mm-hmm. I guess would be the would be the term, you know. And and people who claim, oh, the motivation rewards don't work, yeah, because you're not you're not sticking to it. You're not keeping your word. Mm-hmm. You have to you have to be honest and you have to stick to what you say. And which which actually brings me to the next point, which is you got to watch what comes out of your mouth. This is one of the keys to always telling the truth is you actually have to pay attention to what you say. And I am as bad at this as anybody where I forget, I let things come out of my mouth that I don't mean. And I've, I've got to get better at this where, you know, well, there's the school teacher example where, and every school teacher knows this, never give a kid detention uh, unless they, you absolutely have to, because it's a punishment for you, the teacher, like don't give, don't make reward or don't make threats on things you're not willing to follow through on where Oh, yeah, because then then you get like mad, like you're still mad because if you're making a like a, a threat or something where it's actually a punishment to For you, you yeah. then you're really mad. Then you're even madder when the kid like misbehaves because you're punishing yourself. Yeah, so don't make don't say something you're not willing to follow through on and don't punish yourself when you make these rules and decisions, which is why we keep harping back to this family council. Set yeah. it up in family council when everybody's calm and collected and there, you're not in the middle of the throes of Yeah, you're not in a crisis. Yeah. You're not in the middle of a crisis or an emergency situation or, you know, and, and, and you know, you have things set up on money pants and you have rewards and you have fees set up ahead of time yep. and you have your family rules ahead of time when you're calm. That's so much better. Well, and if you do say something that you don't mean, by all means, correct yourself. You know, and I'll do that. Where I'll say something, I'll be mad or I'll get upset and I'll be like, all right, everybody wanted you to bet. I don't want to see you till tomorrow. And I'd be like, no, because the house is still messy and nobody's going to clean Nobody's eating dinner. Nobody's going to sleep well. Uh, Why did I say that? Okay. Guys, I misspoke. And I, I, I will say those exact words. Guys, I misspoke. What I meant to say was, everybody go to your room for five minutes while I cool down. And then I'll give myself a couple of minutes and go, okay, everybody back out. Let's let's try this, let's again. Try this again. Okay, here's what we're going to do. But I will say that that has proved, I, I try hard to, to listen to what I say and to be careful and only make promises and consequences that I'm willing to follow through on. And I remember we were, when we were in Burbank, we would take the kids out for breakfast. And it was this, and everyone would get all ready and like, hey guys, this week we're going to go out to to McDonald's for breakfast and the kids got all excited and get all dressed up. And we only had a couple of kids at the time and they get all dressed up and ready and we get in the car and inevitably it's like they're all in close proximity to each other and they're hungry and, but they're also kind of excited. Maybe it's the giddy energy. I don't know what it is, but they'd always start needling each other and teasing and fighting. Like it was almost like a habit. Oh, car time is tease time. Car time is fight time. And it was the opposite of what we wanted. And so I said, I remember saying this, okay, guys, before we got in the car, I set everybody down. I said, "Okay, here we go." I remember this. We're gonna go. We're gonna go out to breakfast. It's gonna be great. But if there's any teasing, any at all, any fighting, no. I said, if there's any fighting at all, I will turn the car around and we will come back home. Do you think the kids believed me? No, no, they didn't. Because they never, <laughs> they, they didn't know. So sure enough, we get in the car. We couldn't have gone two blocks. Ah, he hit me. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, you know what I did? Next red light, stop. Get in the left-hand lane, do a U-turn, go right back home. Kids got out of the car, and they were shocked. Shocked. And that's because normally I was the person taking them places. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that whole idle threat thing? Are, wait, aren't we going to breakfast? Well, what did I say? Uh, well, you said if we fought, we wouldn't go to breakfast. Yeah, was there fighting? Yeah. Okay, well, maybe we can try again next week. 
And sure enough, next week I I made sure I was very clear. When we go, we get in the car, guys. I don't want there to be any fighting. And if there's fighting, I'll turn the car right around and we'll come right back home. <laughs> I think we made it four blocks the second time. <laughs> and the kids are like, I, I, I don't know if they're just testing the boundaries or what, but sure, sure enough, there, there was fighting. And so I turned the car, we come right back home. Guess what happened the next week? We made it to McDonald's and we, we had a great time because the kids knew, oh, what dad says, he, he's going to stick to his word. He, he's going he's gonna to do what he said he's going to do. And fast forward, you know, I remember going to IHOP and we had a much larger family by that point. And we'd go to IHOP on Saturday mornings for breakfast. And we sat all the kids down and said, okay, guys, once again, no teasing, no fighting. You know, I, but not only that, I expect perfect behavior. While we're at the yeah, restaurant. you better have good manners. Where this will and, not work if you guys don't have perfect behavior. Yeah, There's no they, way they, this could possibly work. Our family's too big. If if all of you are like having issues, it's going to be a disaster. And it was amazing. <laughs> People would routinely come up to us and go, "What? What's your secret? You guys have the best behaved children ever." <laughs> Little did they know that the kids had to pay for their own food yep, if and, there were problems. Yep, that was the consequence we set up. It was like, okay, if there's if there's a problem. Then you pay for your own food, and all of a sudden, man, what a what a difference! But by setting it up ahead of time, but then also, Hannah, we stuck to our word. We didn't go, oh, I feel so bad making them pay. Nope, that was their decision. Yeah. They're the ones that decided to have bad behavior. I'm not the one. I yeah. didn't make them have bad behavior. I'm not the one that made them fight. And it it made the trip so enjoyable though for everybody. Yeah. So. Yeah, it it, it was. It was relaxing and 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 a lot more fun. So when it comes to talking to your kids, that, that brings up a good point, though. And that is sometimes your kids will try to trick you into lying where they don't have the same value system that you do. And they may not have bought into the whole be 100 percent honest yet. Ideally, that that's where you where you want them to end up eventually. But maybe they're not quite there yet. And so they'll they'll come up with ways to try to trick you into lying or to trick you into doing something that they want without telling you the whole truth. And I'll give you an example where I know a family who had a teenage son who would routinely leave out information when he would borrow the family car. And I remember he would, he told the, the parents, Oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go pick up uh, such and such at school. Can I borrow the car? I'm going to go pick up such and such at school. And the parents are like, yeah, sure. Six hours later, the son comes home and the parents are like worried, sick. They're like what? we thought something happened. We thought you were an accident. We're going to get a hold of you. What happened? We were, they were terrified. Come to find out the son had gone to the school, but also had gone to the girl's house and gone and done this and gone to this friend's house and didn't bother to tell the parents. And the parents were worried, sick, didn't know what happened to him, thought he'd been in an accident. So couldn't get a hold of him six hours when he later, when he was supposed to be home in what, 20 minutes. So, but the son had purposely left out information. Because he knew that the parents would have said no. (laughs) Because he knew they would have said no. So, when and, and kids will try to do that. They'll, they'll leave out information, or they'll try to get you, as we talked about, you know, with your with your brother Kevin, where he would try to get your parents at at your, or your mom in this in this case. He'd try to get them at those inopportune moments where the parents' guard is down. Mom, can I go to the movies with my friends? You know, the mom's like, oh, fine, whatever. Where it's the kids will do that. They'll they'll choose the the time where you know maybe you're distracted or you're carrying in groceries and your your arms are full or you're thinking about something else. Like, hey, can I go to can I go to the friend's house? And you're like, no. <laughs> this reminds me of a Christmas story where the little boy's like trying to find the best way and to time his to, and to, to ask the, his parents the red for rider. the red rider. <laughs> yeah. So we have a couple of techniques. One is anytime the kids ask for something. You don't want to be a liar. You don't want to tell them yes when you should have said them and then change your mind to no. You don't want to tell them no if it would have been okay and you end up having to change your mind to yes and the kids don't believe you anymore. It's This is the one technique is to give yourself an escape clause. When kids ask you for something, say, oh, well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Let me think about it. Or, wow, I, 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 that, I think that would probably be okay, probably be okay. Let me ask your mom. You know, I've I've found that with other people, a lot of times I, I have a problem getting overcommitted to things where I have a really busy schedule. And it seems like there are always more and more things that I could say yes to or be involved in. Mm-hmm. And I sometimes I feel like I'm in a corner and I don't have time to like look at my calendar and really think through whether or not this is something I want to commit to. Right. 
And so you and I finally, you we finally figured out that I shouldn't say, my answer should be, oh, sounds good. Let me, let me talk it over with my husband. Hannah, and so that, that gives best. me a chance to think about it, talk about it, and decide if it's really something I want to commit to. And so, yeah, it might be and it might not be. But the answer is always, it sounds good, but let me talk it over with my husband. You Anyway, use the same thing with your kids so that you can actually think things through where you're not like in the middle of something trying to, you know, give your, give yourself time. Give you, and An escape clause. Yeah. And then yep. also like a lot of times I'll forget, wait a minute, you know, if I do go talk to you fontaine you'll be like well are their jobs done is their uh, room clean mom, i'm like can, mom oh, can we go on a bike ride? i knew yep, there yep. was something you know yep. so so anyway it helps um, though to be out of the moment where i'll come to you exact same thing and for example i was at the tire store the other day this works really well with salesmen and the salesman wanted to sell me two new tires for 500 bucks and i'm like man that's out of our price range that's the one i was hoping for but you know they're so pressing and you're there in the store and people are behind you in line and you kind of feel pressure to buy and, uh, and i'm like well, you know what? That sounds great. Let me talk to my wife. And I went and I called you. And it, that just kind of disconnecting from the pre- the immediate yeah, pressure. Yeah, you didn't even get a hold of me. and But but just the act of calling me. To stepping away from that pressured situation. where I, oh, I, And the kids will do that. I need a decision now, mom. Nope, you don't. You sure don't. Yeah. Let me talk to your dad first. Let me talk to your mom first. Yeah. And it works really well. And so, uh, so. Yeah, you couldn't get a hold of me. And so while you were waiting to get a hold of me, you started calling around to other tire places. Way cheaper prices. Yeah. And so so that answered it for you, just taking the, <laughs> to stepping away from the situation. Or we were also at a mattress store, same, oh, same yeah. thing, where where it was like, oh, this is $2,000 no, mattress, $3,000, $3, but mattress. this is going to change your life and you should buy it now. And, and our uh, policy and, was, oh, well, we always th- think of things 24 hours before we make a big purchase. Yeah. That's a family policy. Yeah. And the answer was no. Yeah. Heck no. Heck no. <laughs> there were many so, other things we wanted more than that. But when your so. teenagers and even younger kids come to you, and here's a technique. Here's, we use this all the time. When they come to you asking for something and want a response right away, first thing is, well, that sounds good, but I need more information. And then, you know, you find out from your spouse, oh, yeah, there's nothing going on. There's no reason why they can't go. You still need to ask the follow-up questions because, as we learned from this other family and their teenage son who would routinely leave information out, there are four questions you can (laughs) ask and should ask every time your children go somewhere. And here they are. Number one, where are you going? Number two, who's going to be there? Number three, who's going with you? And number four, when will you be home? The reason why you ask those questions is because it, it, they're very specific. And if your kid leaves any of those things out, they're actively lying. Where they know they're lying. Whereas if, you, if they say, hey, can I go pick up my book at the store? You're like, oh, that sounds fine. They left out that they're going to go to their girlfriend's house afterwards. But they didn't actually, in their mind, they didn't actually lie. But if they say, if you ask, where are you going? Well, I'm going to here. Is that is that the only place you're going? Well, yes. Ah, so if they go somewhere else, now they're caught. Mm-hmm. And now their own conscience should be going, mm, yeah, I'm, I'm lying to my parents. This isn't a good thing. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be there? Because kids will say, oh, a group of us are going to go over to our friend's house. Can I, can I go over to... Johnny's house and come to find out Johnny wasn't there. Parents weren't there. It was just him and his girlfriend. Yeah. Left that information out though, didn't you? A, fr- a group of us are going to go to the movies. Oh no, it's just <laughs> Sally and her boyfriend. Well, yeah, I once had a situation similar to that where one of my kids was like, oh, I'm going to go with friends and we're going to go here and there and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And the friends showed up to to go uh, go with this kid they're gonna go hang out and the minute they walked in the door i was like heck no (laughs) no you're not going anywhere with these people and yeah i had to call the kid into my back bedroom and go no and how dare no mm, 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 mm." (laughs) this will only end badly (laughs) not with those kids you're not going anywhere so anyway and don't feel like you have to explain Uh, why and we'll talk about this in a future podcast but a great thing is to go i don't feel comfortable 
with that decision. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable with you doing X, Y, and Z and leave it at that. You don't yeah. have to explain. And we're going to talk about that when it comes to negotiating and bargaining in, in the future podcast where that's not something you do. Don't do that with your kids. We'll talk about that yeah. in a future podcast. Okay. So I heard about this concept about not lying to my kids and not making these idle threats. And I now understand how it relates to money pants and mm-hmm. how money pants is it, it being six, being successful at money pants is contingent on you you know, following through and actually sticking to what you say and what you set up. Right. Okay. And I, I understand that. But when I first heard this concept of not lying to your kids by making these idle threats, I, I misinterpreted that. And this is very important. I misinterpreted it to mean, oh, so whatever crazy idle threat you made, you need to follow through with that. <laughs> Okay. No, 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 no. no, no. Okay. Okay. So here's your idol. If you do that again, I'm going to staple your foot to the floor. Um, Oh, oh, dang it. Now I have to staple their foot to the floor. No, don't do that. Don't make, don't. uh, So if you're in the habit of making idle threats that, you know, wow, that's actually not legal to do that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> don't feel like well i need my kids to know that i am not a liar so we are going to leave them on the side of the freeway here yeah <laughs> don't no, <laughs> don't do that okay that's not that's not good instead what you need to do is calm down you know maybe take a little break maybe stand outside the car for a minute till you calm down think about it and then go okay say i shouldn't have said that that was an idle threat and just admit you made a mistake. I think, no, that goes a long way. Yeah, just say, just, you know, calling I, attention to the fact I that said I said mis- something. I misspoke. I misspoke. Yep. I yep. said something I'm not willing to do, or that wouldn't be safe, or, <laughs> or that I, would, I that's, have, I have that's come not to my, a good idea. I have come to my senses and realized that was a foolish thing to say. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Nothing what I were, should have said is this. Mm-hmm. That's what we're gonna do. Yep. Okay. So don't like, don't be like, okay, I'm working on. You know, I said what I said and I, you know, I, you know, I've got to do it now. Um, That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, you know, try to think about what you're saying. And if you, you know, don't, if you find yourself making these idle threats, uh, uh, point it out to yourself and to your kids. Say, huh, nope, that's not what we're doing. And that's, this is what we're going to do. And this is the truth. So if you have. So correct yourself. Yeah. So if you have this habit, I mean, obviously the. I, ideally, you want to be 100% honest, but if you're making idle threats, don't follow through with yeah. the ones that are horrible. The, and the quicker you correct yourself, because at first you may not catch yourself till you're like, whoa, wait, that, you know, maybe the next day you'll be like, oh, that was an idle threat. Okay, got to do better on that. That's great. Um, that's great. Um, and, and, and you'll start catching yourself quicker and quicker, like... Mm-hmm. It'll be like coming out of your mouth and you'll be catching it. And you go, oh, no, no, Anna, no. no. I, I do that. Where yeah. I, like, I, I will say things. And as it's coming out of my mouth, I'm like, nope, no, nope, I'm, no we're not going to do that. Okay. Never mind. Um, a lot of times, that. everybody go to your room till I think of something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to like. Uh, but the, the best solution, uh, if you have a habit of lying, is to be honest. Yeah, that's the best. Replace it with solution. honesty. Don't follow through with the thing. Anyway, that needs to be very clear. Don't follow through with the, the thing that you shouldn't have said. Yes, or that punishes you, or yeah. whatever. Instead, just correct it with the truth. Right, and the uh, best, and th- point it out. Say, mm. now that's really good for when you're in the moment. Yeah, but what's better? What's better is, is to, to watch it. what you say well, and, disca- and come up with these and anticipate these problems. And when, discuss them in family council. That's the best time to do this. And like we said in the previous podcast in family council, family council can be five minutes. It could be at the dinner table. It could be when you're getting in the car. It could be before you get in the car. Like it could be all of five minutes just to explain, hey, Matt, man, last time we went to the fair, three people got lost and two people had their money stolen and two of you got, and one of you got hurt. I'd like to avoid that this time. What are we going to do? Yeah. That, that's the better time to do it rather than when you're at the fair and you're getting angry and you're so frustrated. It'd be better to do it beforehand in a family council. I think scared would be more than... <laughs> I don't know that I'd be angry. <laughs> getting robbed and my kids are missing. A... Well, okay. I don't know. That's after kind of a kid, funny After example. the kid wanders off for the fifth time and doesn't oh, hold hands. Oh, like, okay. Stinking right. stinker. 
Uh, anyway, Who's so... Who's your mom? Hannah <laughs> yeah. Banana. Okay. Oh, wait. Has this happened? No. No. So, uh, to, so to kind of wrap this up, uh, honesty, we believe that honesty truly is the best policy. And, you know, here, here are the things, you know, we, we talked about, you know, no idle threats. Stop the idle threats. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Yeah. Um, be 100% honest. Don't threaten something you're not willing to follow through on. Hold family counsel when everybody's calm and stick to what you decide. Don't fall into the, oh, I'm being nice trap. Don't fall, don't fall into that trap. And think about what you're going to do. Say what you're going to do and do what you said. Remember the, the Dr. Seuss poem? Unless you Hort- said something stupid. Yeah. yeah. Well, Horton hears a who. I meant what I said. I said what I meant. An elephant is, is faithful 100%. Where mean what you say, but also say what you mean. And a lot of people get tripped up on that where they didn't actually mean what they said. So yeah. that's the end goal, believe it or not, is that, that great quote. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant or a mom and dad mm-hmm. are faithful 100%. Yeah. And so um, uh, back to the whole correcting yourself, if you're in this habit, as you get to the point where you're not saying things that you don't mean anymore, you're going to find that when you speak, your kids listen. And it is awesome, you know, uh, to have that sort of, to carry that sort of trust and respect where where if you say something, it means something. Yeah. And so uh, as you get better... And, and start improving, uh, watching what you say, and uh, only saying things that you actually mean, mm. and that you're actually uh, willing to follow through with, that respect, it, it's, it's powerful. And you're really going to, it's going to go a long way to making it so um, as you set up money pants, and you set up rewards, and you set up consequences, they're going to, what, what you set up and what you say, it's going to have power, and it's going to actually... It, the system will actually work. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so but but the the trust and the honesty is kind of has to be at the base of this. Right. Phew. So and that's it. Those are all of our thoughts on being honest and never lying. If you like what you hear in this podcast, please tell your friends. They may want to listen too. And if you have a suggestion for a future podcast, go to our website under support and click contact us. Send us an email and we'll get right on it. And that's it for today. Enjoy some of Falcon Jasper's deliberately devious downbeats. We'll see you next time.